Okay, so first, let me start this video off by saying I am not a car or a truck person. I'm a tech guy, I'm a geek, I'm a nerd that loves cool technology, and that's what this Hummer EV is. So my kind of approach to, to this video was just really to give you my driving experience from a normal, everyday guy um, who is trying this big truck out in urban environments and also taking this thing off-road, and just kind of give it to you like how my experience has been, and that's what I'm about to do. So the first thing I will say is that the handling for this truck it does feel like a car when you're driving. It doesn't feel like the big beast that it is. And that's because it does have some really tight steering, especially with four wheel drive. So you're able to really get in and out of tight spaces. If you're going to the grocery store, um, you're going to pick up some clothes, or if you're like me, if you got to pack your belt, um, I needed to go to the store and pick up a belt. I'm able to get in and out of parking spaces really easily with this. And you have up to 18 cameras on this truck too. So you can use those and take advantage of them when you're trying to navigate um, in parking lots, but especially when I went off road, like being able to have a camera on the front when I'm going over a very steep hill and I can't see what's over that hill, having that front facing camera was incredibly clutch. And I don't see how people do it. I guess you have to get out and spot yourself or have someone else get out and make sure everything is clear. But with this vehicle, having that front camera and then cameras on the underbody to make sure that you have enough clearance. Um, and of course you can raise and, and lower this vehicle depending on the, the uh, terrain that you're in. But yeah, these cameras just make it feel like you have an extra eagle eye in the sky and especially with that 360 view uh, definitely is welcome on a vehicle of this size but by far the number one thing that really makes this vehicle drive so well is the suspension system it is great and now out here in arizona where i'm test driving this there aren't a lot of potholes so that's good but back in st louis look i love my city uh, but they have a lot of freaking potholes man and uh, but with this vehicle i wouldn't feel like having an issue going over them actually I'll probably seek them out because uh, the tires and the suspension system are excellent and um, when I was taking this thing off-road where the suspension system really kicked in it was a joy to ride because look we were going over some gnarly stuff man I mean little tiny boulders and going up and downhill and just like tackling a lot of different terrain I look I, at first I was a little nervous because this ain't my vehicle man like I signed off for it for the for the day but you know it's not mine so I didn't want to damage it but I had to kind of get comfortable with just trusting the vehicle and knowing that it's made for this type of stuff and if i didn't take it out it would probably be kind of mad at me and you have that armor underbody so if you do accidentally scrape a couple of things like i did it's all good um, but you can also raise and lower this vehicle too so depending on the, the the terrain or the drive mode that you're in um, you can do that to be able to make sure you have enough clearance and uh but yeah the suspension system was great and we were like tilting left and right uh, but this vehicle handled everything pretty well so i'm on the highway right now and the acceleration of this beast is great just being able to press down on that pedal and get up and going this thing is so awesome um, and you have over a, a thousand horsepower with this thing so you're able to pick up and go and if you want to go even faster you want to kind of impress people you have that wtf mode which stands for watch to freedom and that's a whole production in itself where you activate that and the car like gets itself ready it lowers it a couple of inches and then also just gets everything ready to go um, for you to be able to accelerate from zero to 60 miles per hour in just about three seconds for the first time they actually allowed us to be able to do the wtf mode but the truck handled like a dream like you just have your hands on the steering wheel and you didn't you weren't like fighting it to keep it uh, centered and straight down the road. Um, you just <laughs> accelerate. Three, two, one. That's so fun. And let it go and then the braking is awesome of course. So I was able to get to a stop before I took it in, into the uh, <laughs> defense. But um, yeah, WTF mode is definitely one of those things you're gonna show off to your friends. But just for normal driving, being able to accelerate, decelerate, um, all those things is great with this. But let me pause all the city talk and just really talk about what this vehicle is made for. And that's when you wanna get down and dirty, going off road, going on trails that you wouldn't take uh, a lot of other vehicles on. This thing was cool because look, they took us on this pretty scenic trail that has some really insane up and down moments where we're going up some steep hills and you couldn't see uh, past the hill or if you're taking like these turns where the vehicle feels like it's almost sideways but one thing I did do a lot of was taking advantage of the cameras to be able to see the different camera angles to make sure I'm not about to scrape up the side of the vehicle oh and speaking of that like this does have um, some vibration motors in the driver's side seat so when it does feel like it's you're getting close to something on your left or your right side those motors will actually kick in 
and uh, notify you. So that was really cool to experience for the first time. Um, I wish it was like a massaging seat, but uh, yeah, having those type of physical uh, notifications while I'm, while I'm going in these tight trails was definitely very welcome. All right, so we're at the halfway point now and look, the, the drive up was pretty fun. It was pretty, you know, one of the things is you have to get comfortable with this vehicle and just allow it to be itself and trust it. But all of that was worth it to get to this view. We have all of the vehicles lined up here. A lot of people capturing content right now. But, you know, my favorite experience so far, again, is just getting more trusting with the vehicle and knowing that it's meant for this type of off-roading. It's meant to be able to get to destinations like this that you can't get to in a lot of vehicles and to do it in a way that's comfortable, is smooth, and you, then you, you do have the technology and the uh, you know great speaker system too. We were jamming on the way up here. I can't play it because of copyright, obviously, but yeah, so far halfway point of this off-road adventure, solid. Okay, something cool that just happened is that I have to remember when I do turn the truck off, when I turn it back on, I have to put it back in off-road mode because right here what you see is me spinning the tires out going up this very steep hill, but that's because I was still in normal mode. Now, the cool thing is that I eventually got up the hill still in normal mode, but if I was in off-road mode, it would have been way better. But it was kind of fun realizing that we were about 10 to 15 minutes back on the trail going over some rough terrain and I was in normal mode the whole time, but it felt like I was in off-road mode. So that's pretty impressive. All right, so now let's talk about the software experience because as a techie, as a smartphone kind of snob, I love uh, seeing the UI and the interfaces with these vehicles. So you have two big screens here, one right in front of you while you're driving and also one in the center dash. And this one is where you're gonna be doing most of your navigation. So we're on the home screen right now, but you see all of the different options, including a Wi-Fi hotspot, which is clutch. You also have rear climate controls for your passengers in the back. And then also you have access to your camera so you can tap on this uh, to be able to get these different views here. So right now we're looking at the 360 mode and also just the uh, the view right in front of me. But of course, down here, you can go and uh, adjust some of these. So you can go ahead and hit that one to see um, what's going on behind you. And I love those little lines to be able to make sure um, you're in check and you know where you're going. Um, but yeah, you have some more cameras here. You have a um, another uh, top down angle here. And this is great for looking at your trailer if you want. Um, and also you have some uh, side views here. So um, if you are coming up on something right next to you, you can swap between these views. Um, and then also you have uh, this angle right here to be able to look down um, at your your hitch if you are um, of course hauling something behind you and if you hit this arrow right here you'll be able to see some underbody cameras so uh, this is great for off-roading but if you are just going over a curb or something you can make sure that you have enough clearance and of course you can see forward um, and backwards with this or you can see both views like this now also in the settings here you will find some controls here for the display so right now it's in auto mode as far as the uh, the day or night uh, type of view that it does have so in auto mode right now it is showing you the day view so uh, the background and stuff is going to be white on both of these screens but as i hit night mode you can see that it will go ahead and shift and darken up the uh, the screens here and so this is going to allow it to not be super bright when you are riding at night so let me go back to day mode right here so you can see the animation um, and, and how this happens so one of the big things with this uh, uh truck is that they do have this kind of moon type of theme here with it and you can see that with the uh the flooring and i um, mean some of the details with the speaker and the grills and stuff like that but you can also see that when you are switching here between day and night modes and now let's go through some of these um, other presets here and i haven't spent too much time in all of these but yeah, this is going to be controlling your audio here so you can have your different presets and also you can choose between some different options like google news uh, and podcasts and this system does have uh, android auto and also um, apple carplay built in so you have your uh, your option there so you can choose your poison uh, but of course bluetooth and stuff like that is there and also your google maps is just like like this so you can look around the screen and i have to say that the responsiveness from this ui has been really good i haven't had any issues with lagging or anything like that and as i rotate this knob this is how you get into the different drive modes and you'll see this animation right here so as i rotate between the knobs here I have terrain uh, you have off-road um, you have my mode, which you can customize that to your personal liking. And then also you have normal mode, which I've been driving here um, around the city, tow and haul mode as well, and terrain off-road as I showed you before. But these animations are just really super cool. So they work with this uh, kind of animation studio, I believe, or graphic studio that uh, works with Marvel and stuff. So you can definitely tell this attention to detail is super, super sweet as you're rotating this knob. Now, one thing I hate about electric vehicles is that some of them try to get too cute, right? When they just want to go with all the screen. But I love that GM has um, some physical buttons here so you can control the AC or also the heated or cooling seats 
just like this. You can just rotate between that just like so. And also this is going to be able to control the uh, uh, the force here of the fan or your AC while it's going. And then also the passenger can control their own uh, um, heating and cooling season. Let me turn this down. That's not good for audio. So yes, I am sweating right now. It's hot because I got the AC off. We also have our cup holder right there. And also we have a place here for, for some more storage or you have a USB-C and a USB type A port there for charging up your phones. And what else do we have in there? I can't really see. Um, but then also you do have some storage here. I like to put my smartphone right here. Um, I don't know if this is wireless charging or not or whether you can add that, but hopefully I can uh, annotate that in the video. But yeah, you, ha you have some more storage down here. And now I'm just um, showing you some of the controls here for the screen that's in front of the driver and i haven't really messed around with this that much but um, i'm just showing you some of the things here that you can do um, you have some presets here for your compass um, also your music controls and also some more things about the wheels and stuff that's going on with this um, but yeah this is good to be able to have this information right here and the controls are very solid right here to be able to navigate the screen and just in general, this entire vehicle is incredibly spacious. I haven't really sat in the back seat yet, but you can see that it should be comfortable for up to five people in this truck. And these uh, sky view panels right here, you can take off. Um, I'm running out of time right now to do it, but um, they uh, do have some very simple controls. One single person can, can do it. I think each individual panel weighs about 15 pounds, so they're not super heavy and they also store right in the front. Um, you can open that up and they designate it or just design a space for all of these. Oh, and now just for some bonus information that I don't want to leave out of this video. So the edition of the Hummer EV that I've been driving for this video is the edition one. So this currently has reservations that are totally full and it does start at $110,000, but you do have other versions of this Hummer EV that have lower prices, different feature sets, and also to different release dates. Oh, and then there's something hidden in the back of the truck, and this is a complete audio system with multiple speakers and USB ports and uh, audio inputs and things. So this is cool because now you can be working out of the, the back of your truck or just at a work site or a camping site, and you can control the sound and the music coming right out of the back of the truck. And the last little extra piece of information is that the very first Hummer EV, VIN number one, was auctioned off to charity for $2.5 million dollars and it went to the tunnel to towers foundation and basically this foundation builds mortgage free smart homes for injured veterans and this is going to be with a lot of different accessible features so they can get around a lot easier uh, depending on their injury so this is a great cause and so i'll drop a link to this charity in the description of this video so look, just summing up my experience, which I didn't want this video, video to be like super technical. I've done some videos going over all the little different aspects of the, uh, the components of this vehicle and the outside and the inside. But my driving experience with this is a vehicle that I personally, not being a truck person, wouldn't mind driving every single day. This vehicle is made for taking your kids to school um, or taking them on a camping trip or something. Um, so this vehicle is just something that is made for, I think, a lot of people. And I think they've done, they've done a great job in just around like two years or so of development. I think this vehicle turned out really well. And I've been trying to think of negatives about this truck, but really I can't find that many. And look, I'm not a truck person, so I don't review a lot to be able to compare it against other trucks. but. I haven't really found one thing about this truck that's like, oh man, why, why, why did they do this? Like, uh, this thing just has a lot of the bells and whistles, especially with the software that satisfies a nerd like me. So for right now, like, look, if I needed to go get a truck, I think this uh, Hummer EV definitely is going to be at the top of my list. Uh, but I think it's one of those things that has a lot of people interested in it. And I think people are going to be happy with it if they do get it. But yeah, these are just my thoughts about this Hummer EV super truck. <laughs> what do you think about it? Leave your comment down below. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell. But like always, I do want to thank you for watching this video. And I will catch you later. Peace.